Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to, my name is Carla and the, you're watching Sew Knit, Create and Repeat and I think this is episode 14. I'm coming to you from the east coast of the North Island of Aotearoa and I'm featuring a blowfly that is buzzing around in here and I was hoping he didn't follow me in here but he did. Um, yeah, so episode 14. I thought I would do one last podcast before we get to December because I've decided to do Vlogmas. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you can hear that blowfly. Blowflies drive me nuts. And I don't even have any fly spray I can shoot them with. Um go away so let's start let's start what do we have oh what I'm wearing this is my ranunculus that I made from this really old wool I've got the packet here So I bought these from the Salvation Army. I got two bags with about the same amount in them. And I've got absolutely no idea, I think I've already said this, how old this wool is. But the labels look pretty old. So I'm thinking it might be the same age as me. <laughs> It's 90% wool and then the rest is that sparkly stuff. So this knit up really quick. I was, I think it was a work in progress um, the last time I filmed. And I managed to knock it out quite quickly. So it's just sort of a, a cropped length. So you can kind of see there. And I just need to um, sew on a little tag onto the back. Uh, so I can tell which is the front and the back. At the moment I've got this tiny little cut off thread from the cast on that I've left until such time as that happens. So yeah. So that is one finished object. Now I did have, I don't have very, very good production values here guys. Uh, what else? Oh, well, I might as well mix the sewing with the knitting, I guess. I just, if you're not into it, you're not into it, but it's just easier for me. So I've also made two dresses. Um, these came from Peppermint Magazine. It was a free download, and it was uh, made in collaboration with Hubbarding. So basically it's just quite a wide, wide bodice and then um, you sew ruffle sleeves and a skirt to it really. <laughs> quite simple. So I made two. So the first one I made, I bought this fabric specifically for this but I bought it probably in the autumn. So that's it there. It's just a nice rayon. My coat hanger's getting a bit... I, was just, I wore it to the supermarket this morning. There's that. There's the skirt. Um, and then the back has these buttons. You can kind of see those. Um, I love the way this drapes. Oops. That's my notes. I love the way it drapes. And yeah, it just feels floaty and because it's all done on a square and then that side sort of rectangle and that side sort of drops down, um, you find that then the skirt drops slightly at the end, at the sides and is nice and flat at the front and the back. So yeah, so that's number one. And then one of the places that I buy fabric from was having a sale and it was like 50% off cotton so I bought this 
cotton. So that's something on there. And I made this one. The sleeves there. I couldn't find, I haven't bought buttons for years, I just use my button stash. And sometimes I'll pick up a packet of buttons from the op shop where they've removed buttons off clothes that they've turned into rag. Uh, so I just found these self-covering buttons in my button stash and I just covered it with, with the original fabric. And this one's really lovely too and it's quite different from the other one because it's a more rigid fabric. So kind of can't tell that it's the same pattern. Do you know what I mean? So there's those two finished objects. And then I think there's one more. Where did I put it? Here. And this one is spinning. Uh, this is 100 grams. Hopefully you can see that all right. So I wanted some dark earthy colours because um, once I've finished my night shift shawl I'd like to make the matching cowl but I want more earthy colours around my face so I've got that one and that ties in I might as well show you this now this is the two bobbins this is 100 grams I've dyed the fleece with uh, What's it called? Jacquard acid dyes. That bluey colour is um, spruce, so it's more of a bluey green. And then the gold is called Aztec gold. And I dyed this on a natural grey base. So the grey base is, let's pop that over there out of the way. It's just this. So this one came from. Uh, our 10 talents store in town and it is well it says mcsl so i know there's corridale but i don't know whether it's blend because that's all it tells you um yeah so that's a kilo bag i've got there so yes so there's those i'm going to be pumping through this quite quickly which would be quite good uh, so yeah, it was nice to get that off the needles and do those dresses. Um, I've been knitting quite frantically. I've got two active whips. I've got a lot of other whips, but these are the ones I'm working on. So I'll show you. This is the project we're using my hand spun. my night shift shawl and yeah it's it's lovely because you really want to keep knitting it but I don't need a shawl right now because we're heading into summer so I've just put it aside temporarily so that I can finish some of my summer knits so you can see that I'll show you the, um, so these are the ones that are on there at the moment. And that's one of my red bases, which you would have seen um, me show those before. Um, no, there's nothing else. Nothing else on there, I was trying to think. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, I knit this in size 7 because I wanted it to be boxy and oversized. I don't want a fitting jumper. So, yeah, so there's that. And I, I am enjoying it even though, like, I love colour and I really enjoyed spinning these and seeing how the colours work together. But it's another thing for me to wear something really bright. <laughs> So there's those. 
um, did I say that was a night shift shore by Andrea Mero? Maybe. And then the next one I'm working on is the Chow Bala Kami by Sari Nordland. Sorry, I've got sun sort of coming through the window and it's making me squint. So this is the Chow Bala Kami from Sari Nordland. That's how... Just try and make that a little bit easier so you can see the pattern better. So it's an interesting construction because um, you start from the straps, you knit down to where your, you would join in the round under the armpits, put those stitches on hold, then you knit the back by picking up your provisional cast on at the top of the straps and then knitting down that side. I stuffed up once, I got to about here sort of thing so I join them too and it says make sure you don't twist your straps and I made sure I didn't twist some straps and then I come around and I was like oh that strap's twisted so I had to undo all the right up to where you do your cable cast on across here and start again <laughs> and then when I joined in the so she gives you instructions so she gives you a chart and I don't mind charts, I've figured out how to use them. But I do struggle when part of the pattern, the lace pattern is worked flat and part is worked in the round. And so she gets you to, so like say a dot might mean a knit on the right side but and then a purl on the wrong side. Does that make sense? Whereas when you're round, 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 the symbols just mean the same thing. And I didn't want to have to think about that. I didn't want to have to think, oh, so SSP is SSK and, you know. Ugh. So I just used the written instructions. And she has two different ones. One's from size 1 to 6, and I'm knitting size 4. And then, um, or five, size 5 or something like that. And then size 6 to size 9. And I joined in the round, so then I went to find my chart, my um, instructions for the lace pattern, and I started to knit it, and I was like, it's not working. I don't have enough stitches on this pattern repeat section. And I was like, what's going on? And I was using my calculator, and I was calculating how many stitches should be on there. And I just, and then I finally clicked that I was looking at the written instructions for the larger size. <laughs> So that's why I didn't have enough stitches in that repeat. So that's all right. That was yesterday afternoon's drama. So yeah, I hope it's not too wide. But it can be a floppy around home thing if it is. I think it'll be all right. So yes, yeah, so I've done that. So that's cool because I wanted another summer knit. And I'm using um, DMC Baby Cotton. That's it there. 100% Baby Cotton. Hopefully, oh, I want the sun's shining in you there. Um, and it's a, D, a DK. I've got gauge. So each ball is 50 grams. I've used... Oh, I'm on my second ball. So, yes, yeah, so I've got three more to go. So that should be plenty. So yes. And then I decided that, so my, my twin granddaughters, my stepdaughter's babies, they turned three yesterday and, no, day before, Friday. And then I thought, oh, you know, I've had these projects. I started for them when they were newborns. And for one reason or another, I haven't picked them up. So I think I might try and finish that project before Christmas because they're still young enough to enjoy it. So a little bit of backstory. So when I met um, my stepdaughter's father, my ex-husband, she wasn't even two yet. So she was still in nappy, still in a bot, had a bottle, and she had this bedraggled-looking little bunny that she took everywhere with her, like. She was really attached to this toy. 
So I thought I would knit the girls um, some bunnies, but they're actually hairs because they come from come from this book. And I'll show you. Here they are. Now I've done most of the work for the bodies. So it's really just finishing off the bodies and then um, knitting some clothes. So she's Tilly the hair, but she's actually she's going to be a bunny. So, and I may have to restuff some of the bits um, because I had a look at them and I... Oh, where did I put? Oh, it's over that side now. I've been looking in my reflection and I thought, oh, the microphone's gone. <laughs> it's my new toy. Um, I thought, oh, I've recorded all that and there'll be no sound. <laughs> what a dick. So, yeah, I think I may have to open the head up and add more stuffing. That's one. <laughs> that would be the nose and the mouth and the eyes would go in there. It's all being shoved in this little basket, so. There's one part there. Um, another one there. And I've got one stuffed arm. Uh, another empty arm. What else have I got in here? Right, it's another two arms. So I've knitted all the arms, so I only need to knit four legs. That, and that's the body. And I mean, look, they won't take long. So I really should knuckle into that. And I'm just... I knit them on these little, tiny little 2.75 mil straight needles. <laughs> um, the wool I'm using for the body is Merino Soft Baby 4-ply. And I bought that just from one of our craft shops. Um, oh, no, I didn't. I got it from Skeins because it says it's from Skeins. So there you go. And I'm unsure what this is. I did have a label for it, but it'll be a four ply. Now, these patterns are designed to be knit in cotton, but I've made three of the animals and I've made them all in wool and they've been perfectly fine. So I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to start on that later. I'm going to get them knocked out. So they've got a special present from. From this nanny and that really kind of just brings me up to yes a few dreams I do you have a few dreams I've got I was laughing because we had a really kind of seasonably cold unseasonably cold day on Friday and it wasn't that cold, but, you know, we've had some quite hot days and then it was cool and I wore summery clothes to work and I was freezing. <laughs> so I... Just trying to find them. So I thought, you know, when I was a kid, which was in the 80s, I just used to see these ladies, particularly on um, like gymnasts and stuff, they had leg warmers and I always wanted some leg warmers there was a girl at our school that had some so I found a few patterns leg warmer patterns on Ravelry so I thought I might have a go at making some of these at some stage hopefully I don't forget and I always like these ones and I can't remember what they're called. There is a proper name for them. But I like these ones that have got the buttons that go up the sides. A little bit sort of steampunkish. So I've got those. 
And then what is really exciting, so you, if you're into sewing, you're going to find this really exciting. I know I am. I found this website, I was just, oh, I don't know, I was a bit bored. I was actually at work and I should have been working, but I'd done quite a lot. And um, yeah, he was sort of just got, ugh. So I sat there and I thought, I'll just give myself 20 minutes and I'll have a look. Online at a few bits and pieces and I went on there and I found a, because I wanted to see if I could find any more indie pattern designers. And I found a um, directory. So someone, some website blog had created a directory of all these indie pattern designers from around the world and just had a brief description. You know, they do kids, blah, 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 whether they do kids at and adults or just women or men, um, whether they do swimwear, lingerie, whatever, and um, also whether they had pdf um, versions as well as print and i just prefer pdf because i can just buy it now and have printed out and then i'm away and we got right to the end and i did look at quite a few and then i sort of had to go and do my work because that's what it's about and i still had the window open a couple of days later and i went back and i was oh, I'm just sitting there twitching around and right at the end, in the S's, I found a website called So Tina Givens. Now, she has, in a minute, I'll pull these out, the most beautiful, well, I think, beautiful aesthetic. So I've just printed off these size charts, so just give me a minute. And so if you're into flowy linen dresses, tunics, baggy pants, things like that, that's what she designs and they are absolutely gorgeous. So I purchased this one and so a lot of her patterns too are for a set. So it's a top and a bottom all at one, which I think is really good value. So I got this one. I think they're $14.95 US dollars and that translates to 22 New Zealand dollars which I don't mind for particularly for two two items and just the style is just beautiful but then when I was investigating I found that um, she'd also what's that other one Had a whole lot of free ones yeah free ones so i'm just trying to find so that's that pattern because i haven't pieced those ones together yet so this is a fade dress that's a free download and then there's the plinker pants And then there was also a bloom tunic. There's actually quite a few free ones. I just those are the ones I chose. And then on Friday I went back on there and because I've just it's so hard. Like if you're into that style, you're overwhelmed because you want everything. You want absolutely everything on there. And I found another one which was a really cool um, cropped jacket and skirt pattern. So I bought that, but I think I've left the graphics and stuff at work. I've cut out the, um, I've pieced together the pattern pieces, but yeah, I haven't got the other stuff. So, but you'll see it when I make them. So then I went on to the New Zealand, the fabric store online. Went on there, I ordered some cotton foil because it was a good price. Um, hasn't shipped yet. I read later it says something like it could take 20 days to ship, which I think is a bit weird, but anyway. Um, 
And then there's another New Zealand website called Drapers, which is where I got that chartreuse fabric for this dress. Um, and they have really, really nice quality fabric as well. But I don't often buy linen full price because it's about works, it's about 40 New Zealand dollars a metre. And then the other night I was sitting with Evan on the couch and an email came through and it was Drapers saying they had 50% off until the end of the weekend. <laughs> you should have seen how fast I was getting on my computer. So I looked that up and I got four different linens. But the amount of money I spent on that was the amount of money I spent on my kit, my, my wool kit for my West Knits make along, mystery look along, mystery knit along. And I'll get four garments out of that. So yeah, it's not that bad. But 50% off, you can't, you can't poo poo that. So yeah. So these holidays, I'm going to be doing some cool sewing. So uh, yeah, and my only other acquisition is this little microphone thing. So um, hopefully when I do Vlogmas, um, we won't have issues with... Is that still glowing? Oh yeah, won't have issues with lots of wind noise outside because this works quite well. Had a little play with it and tested it when I first got it, so it seems to be working <laughs> quite well. Um... Other than that, we're all just ticking along here over here in New Zealand. We've had a lot of thunderstorms. Um, it's looking like a lovely day outside. Had a few dramas this morning. I went to the supermarket at 7am and as I was walking past the house through the carport, I heard a hissing noise and I looked over and I could see where the hissing noise was coming from. There were two old you know, pump spray plastic bottles that were dead, they were broken, um, the garden sprayers, and they were sitting there waiting to be disposed of, um, and I thought, oh, one of them must have built up some pressure, and I said, oh, no, it's all right, and then I went to the supermarket, came back, got out of the car, was walking to the back door to unlock the house so I could load the groceries inside, and I could still hear that noise and I thought, oh, I should really check that because what if what if the container explodes, even though I can't see why it would. Picked it up and there was no sound coming out of it. And I looked down and we've got this little trap door which allows you um, access to the crawl space under the house. And I opened it up and I was greeted with all this water hissing and squirting out of the water pipes. <laughs> so I quickly video called Evan and I said help <laughs> so I turned the water mains off he's been home since and he has um, discovered we, we put a filter actually put a water filter on um, joining the linking the pipes because we get a lot of like rusty sort of deposits and impurities in our water and um, after a lot of mucking around he re-threaded the tape around it and was still leaking we discovered that the filter part of the filter had a split and the plastic had finally died so he's just rejoined the pipes and it's fine we've got water again now um but yeah <laughs> i was like it was really hard to see because there's there's like polythene plastic on the ground covering the dirt and it was quite hard to see actually how how far this water had leaked under the house. But by the time he came home, that water had actually sort of sunken in. So we might it might be a bit musty when we come inside for the next couple of weeks until it dries out. But it'll be all right. It hasn't been going so long. Although both him and Jess said, oh yeah, I heard that last night. And I thought someone must have been just using water somewhere. I didn't think that when I walked past. I was like, just it sounded like air coming out of a tire. I was like, Sss. so yeah, so I did that. So I did groceries, came home, did that, had the water disaster. Um, had to put all the groceries away, which is a bit of a mission. I've still got a fair bit of stuff to put in the recycle bin, packaging and whatnot. 
um, while I was, I decided I wasn't going to film this until Evan had got here and done that because I didn't want to be interrupted. So I uh, folded all yesterday's washing that came off the line and I've put most of that away. I've just got a few, I've got to sort out my linen cupboard because my linen cupboard is a mess. It's got too much in it. It's a little cupboard and it's got too much in it. So I need to have a bit of a sort out in there and tidy up so I can fit my towels into the cupboard. Even went fishing yesterday and we got a whole lot of teriki or tarakihi is how you should say it. It's just a bit hard because you grow up being told it's, well, you know, learning that it's called teriki and that's not the way you say it. It's tarakihi. So we've got quite a bit of tariki and some kingfish and what was the other one he said? Anyway, I'm going to make a raw fish salad with that, so I should really do that soon. So basically that's when you chop, you get the, so that's with the kingfish um, because it's quite a heavy, oily sort of uh, meat. It's a little bit like tuna. Um, and you chop it up into little cubes and then you soak it in lemon juice which kind of cooks it, marinates it and then you add um, that to coconut cream and you just chop up some capsicums and onion and nice bits and pieces like that and you have that and it's, I think it's like, it's called Tahitian fish salad or something like that but it's, it's something that people around here love. So I thought I'd make some of that and then the rest of the fish, we had fresh fish for tea last night, just pan fried and a little bit of flour and butter. Um, the rest we're going to take out to our Sunday night dinner. So yeah, so that'll be lovely. Yeah. What else? I was trying to think of what else. I knew I had to record this weekend but I didn't really, I only started writing some notes just before. <laughs> So I think my plan now is put this video together. Oh, I've got some footage that I'll chuck on the end. I filmed it last weekend and I thought I'd just do like a little weekend vlog but then I didn't end up doing anything for the rest of the weekend because I ended up with migraines. So um, I'll chuck it on the end. It's basically just me um, building a garden. So I had a little wee garden bed that I created earlier this year at the foot of our new deck and I wanted it to be bigger but I sort of had to, to create it in a shape where the guy that mows our lawns could have access with his ride on to get past so um so it's quite interesting and then yesterday um just so you know added on to that yesterday I got out there and I got some of the old decking timber um, from the stairs that were off the edge of our old deck and I got the skill saw out and I chopped up sort of these little like 30 centimetre lengths thinking 10 centimetres in the ground 20 coming up and just started digging out the edge of that garden to put those in as a garden edge and I subsequently got extremely sunburnt because I made this mistake. See, I'm normally the sort of person who will go, right, it's summer. doesn't really feel like summer yet, so that's probably where I got sucked in. So last weekend I was clever because I actually followed this advice. I came outside first thing, did the outside stuff, and then when the sun got hot I was already inside doing the housework. But this time I did my housework and then I went outside and... I was wearing a long top but it has got quite a wide neck and obviously when I was working the neckline had slipped down and I don't know if you'll be able to see, can you, can you see, can you see, can you see, it does, it looked really bad yesterday, I think it might peel a little bit. I normally go quite just quite brown but yeah that was actually quite sore so I had to use this like aloe vera gel that we've got and rub it in. <laughs> I was trying to get my hand down there and in there I had to wait for Jess to get home to put it in so yeah the rest of me didn't because I was wearing a hat and long you know I was covered but yeah it was just a bit of a wardrobe malfunction while I was outside so that edge is only half done so I'll take the little video on 
the end of this and yeah you can have a little look at that so i will see you if you watch vlogs um on the 1st of december for vlog myth we'll see we'll see how interesting i found it really a lot of fun in october so yeah so thank you for stopping by thank you for watching thank you for all the lovely lovely comments that people have been leaving on my videos and on my instagram um, thank you for the likes thank you for subscribing and i hope to see you next time Pakite. oops jeepers morning morning i'm back <laughs> i thought i would do a little weekend vlog um yeah i look a mess because um i'm building a garden and I just got up this morning and I thought I'd get out there before it gets really hot because it's forecasted to be quite warm today and I don't want to get burnt. Um, we've had some really heavy rain in the last day or so. I do have some footage. I might try and pop it in here. You can see what it was like last night. It was just out the gate. So, yes, I thought I would do... A little vlog showing you how I build my little garden um, so anyone watching before will know that we had a uh, deck extension done earlier this year it is going to be partially covered over but it hasn't been done yet and I had created a little garden bed at the foot of the deck um, but it wasn't big enough and I spoke to Evan the other day and we decided that I would build another one. So I do have a lot of plants around the property that I can divide and take cuttings from. But I went to my tent yesterday to get some compost and I also got a few plant new plants to pop in there as well. And then we'll just build it up over time. So I'll take you outside and you can see I haven't just had a shower. This is sweet. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> Right, we're going to have a look. Right, so I'll move this potty out of the other way. These are the plants that I bought yesterday. So I've got a Hushira. I love that pinky red green foliage. And some lupins. So I've got these ones here. And this is a native ground cover, and I thought that'd be quite nice. I could probably divide it up once it gets a bit. You can see it's got lots of little roots in there. And these, the nemophilia, and this one here is gorgeous, and it actually smells really well. I think it does. It smells like it in the shop. Let me have another sniff. Yeah, it's got the most gorgeous smell, and that is called uh, that. I think it's Australian. So that's part of what I'll put in there. And then I just have, oh, hello, little girl. Hello. Hello. You come for a hello. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So that's the little garden there. It's got weeds in there now. And you can see the shape that I started. So I've used the spade and I've cut lines down like that. And then I'm just trying to retrieve as much of the dirt, the soil from the bottom without too many roots. And it's going to go, can I sit, show you this? It's going to go in an arch around because the man that mows our lawns has a right on mower and he's got to be able to come through here until the day we decide that we'll start doing them ourselves really it's kind of a luxury it's quite nice having someone else do it so that's where i'm at so far 
The sun's already shining. I better go and find a hat. Ooh. It's soggy. Probably some heavy breathing. <laughs> You'll have to forgive any heavy breathing you hear. <laughs> Here you go. So these piles will have to go in the compost. And then I'm going to go and get the compost that I purchased out of the boot of the car and just having some ideas about what to do for an edging I have got a lot of scrap wood so I'm thinking about maybe cutting them into short lengths and sort of tiling around the edge but we'll see right I'm going to get this compost I'm a mess Okay, so I'm done. It's finished. Although I do have some seed I'd like to scatter in there. So I will take you outside and show you I haven't done the edging. I've got to still think on that, but I mean, it's fine. Everything's in the ground, planted. Um, I still have heaps of lavender cuttings left, so I'm going to have to think about where I can use those on read eh? oh my god is that funny so I'm seeing the mirror image of myself and you obviously won't when you see this but when I look at the background of our house it looks so funny like it actually looks quite cool in mirror image <laughs> uh, I'm a dick okay I'll go and go and show you Hopefully there's not too much wind noise because it is quite windy out here. Here we go. There's still a bit of dirt lying around on the ground, but it's all been the big clods have been taken away. So when we come down off these steps, we're going to have a lovely lavender hedge along the side and it'll be all nice and smelly and beautiful. It's the same type of lavender as this. Um, so I took those cuttings autumn this year so there we go see I've divided up that ground cover because it spreads quite a lot so I think that'll be quite nice Watch the space. I'm still going to do something with those antlers. Yeah. So my next move is to go inside once Jess is finished in the bathroom, have a shower, and I'll need to put some more henna in my hair, and then I'll do some housework while I'm waiting for that to cook. <laughs> cooking my hair. Let's bring you over here and show you this. So in Vlogtober I replanted this lime. It was my mum's. And I've given it a feed and you can see the leaves are starting to turn green again which is really positive. And I planted some dahlias and alisum along the edge of this bed. There's a few weeds popping up, but I've just been plucking them before they get too big. Once the dahlias become more established, I can get them out of the gun to just don't really want to disturb them yet. And I've started planting out <laughs> this, so that's all my potatoes, which I just threw in there, the supermarket ones that have sprouted. So I had some sheep poo 
that I got from work. I'm going to put that down and then I put some cardboard over that and I grabbed a couple of bags of compost and I put that down and I've planted rocket, spring onions and cos lettuce and then just as and when I go I'll just grab another couple of bags, another couple of bags and slowly I'll fill up. What I need is a trailer but I don't have a trailer. And these are Jess's sunflowers that she planted. They're getting nice and high, tall now. And quite stunning. Star jasmine's flowering. It's starting to get a bit weedy so I'm going to have to do something about that shortly. And then my, one of my friends at work, she's, she grows a lot of plants from seed and then sells them. So she brings them into work. So I've got some dianthus and some status there. And when I do those edges, I'm going to get some wood and just edge there and edge there. And same on that other little bed. My tomatoes are growing quite a lot. And capsicum. And it's funny, I had just... When I picked one of these cabbages, I cut the bottom off and I just threw it in here. And now a new cabbage is growing. Because <laughs> I put the compost over the top of it. Oh, I need to nip that out of there. I've got to start nipping these laterals out. Um, one of the tomatoes didn't survive. But you get that on the big jobs. Um, uh, where are we going? In there. All right, I'll get rid of you. Where is that one? Yeah, it's all very lovely. Even tells me he wants more chilies, though. <laughs> oh, it's an interesting day. It's windy, it gets sunny, you can see the sky, and then it's still got a bit of that cloud, but apparently, it's supposed to clear completely by the end of the day. Still a thousand broad beans. I pick some of those for my friend. Yeah, so I will go in and carry on, carry on carrying on. But doesn't that look lovely? I totally forgot to do a video. So this is the Wairinga Ahika pub. So it's one of the old original pubs. If I go if I walk around here. So this is the pub side and on the other side they have events and more of a restaurant, but we're just having a pub meal. But if I walk around here. I think there's a wedding on and they've got beautiful gardens so you can see up there I'll just come around here it's lovely hydrangeas so I'm going to get I normally get a steak but I'm going to get fish and chips tonight look at that this is pretty much as old as it gets in New Zealand we don't not a very old colonized country I have a feeling that my great 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 grandfather built this, but I'm not entirely sure. They call it the Bushmere Arms. There you go. And that big add on there, which is a new part, has got big glass dome, which looks gorgeous. So there you go. So we'll be having fish and chips shortly. I think Evan's got steak. It's a lovely day. 
think it's about, must be close to seven at night. And then back around to this little courtyard. It was lovely sitting out here on a Sunday afternoon.